and welcome everyone to week four of our Chassis Student Leadership Advisor webinar series. Today we are lucky to have uh, Scott Cohen, uh, the Activities Director and Assistant to the Principal at Smoky uh, Hill High School. Uh, Scott is going to be talking about uh, making philanthropy, philanthropy a tradition today, and we're uh, looking forward to his presentation. So Scott, the uh, floor is yours. Cool. Thank, thanks for having us. Um, meeting all Smoky Hill, I think. Got some <laughs> students on here, so I appreciate that. And Rashawn, thanks, thanks for pushing me to do this. I appreciate that too. So um, welcome everybody. I'm the activities director. I've been doing that for 15 years at Smoky Hill. Um, and then for the past 12 years, I've also been the student leadership sponsor. Um, and so what I'd wanted to share with, with you guys today, and I'll put my screen up here, is just, um, it took us a long time to get to this point, but I feel like Smoky Hill is a better place now than it was 15 years ago, primarily in, in one piece because of the work that we've done to make giving back a real tradition at Smoky Hill. And it didn't happen instantly. And I can say when I first started, we really struggled with this, trying to, trying to make things work. Um, I feel like as a student government or student council, we always felt like we had to give back in some way. We felt like that was part of our responsibility, something that we felt like uh, we should be doing if we're doing things right as a student council. Um, and we struggled with that. So I think a lot of people look at the same places and are giving to or trying to raise money for American Red Cross or American Cancer Society or the American Heart Association. And all, all those places are great places and they have great causes. And in some cases, we we're almost waiting for the next disaster to happen so that we could then jump on that and, and raise some money. Um, but it never felt like we were that connected to any cause. I feel like we would put a ton of effort into something and raise a couple hundred dollars. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think what we've grown into it is, is to be much more successful. And I'd also say that what we've grown into now when there is a tragedy and we want to go help the American Red Cross, we find it much more success in it because I think we've taught kids the value of giving back and helping others. Um, so I just want to kind of walk you through how we did this. Um, it was a fairly long journey for us, but uh, like I said, I've, I'm sure every school is trying to help make their community a better place. Uh, and there's a lot of places that you can do that. But what I found was when we were trying to, to work with the American Red Cross or American Cancer Society or the Heart Association, there just wasn't that personal connection to it, which I feel like for kids to give, um, there needs to be. And, and I think one group I kind of stumbled upon at one point in time was this organization called Invisible Children, who was uh, this group of young filmmakers who were helping to, their goal was to, to uh, help kids in Uganda uh, get educated and go to school and, and also try to fight this uh, rebel army. And so I had these filmmakers come to Smoky Hill and show this film, which was incredibly powerful. And I actually picked Jason Russell, who's this head guy, up at DIA. I picked him up at the airport and he showed this movie about these kids that they had found uh, hiding from a rebel army at night in Uganda. And when I picked Jason up at, from DIA, he was just, I picked him up early in the morning. We went to Smoky Hill. He shows this film to about 500 kids and all he brought with him was this suitcase. And uh, he says at the end, if you wanna do something, if you feel like you can help these kids in this movie, then give what you can. And it took forever to get these kids to leave the auditorium. They were just pouring money into this guy's suitcase. And I then took him to the airport with a suitcase full of cash, full of cash. I, I don't even know how, how he got through into a plane with the amount of cash that this guy had in his suitcase going back to San Diego. And we had this organization come back a couple of times. In fact, 
I, I put this picture up here because at the end of the movie, there's this boy named Tony who you get to know in the film who says, don't forget about us, please don't forget about us. And we worked with Invisible Children for a couple more years. And in the third year working with them, this boy, Tony, actually came to Smoky Hill and spoke on our stage. It was, it was incredible, this kid who three years before, which I think that was the start for us. To, what it taught me more than anything is if you can tell a story and make a connection with a specific individual and you feel like you're helping somebody specifically, you're gonna have more success in your fundraiser. Um, so I learned that I think from Invisible Children and they eventually kind of, which, which is cool about Invisible Children is um, they actually kind of ended the resistance army in that area and kids got, it, it, the situation turned out to be better. But along the way, I was also hoping that we could use this momentum that we'd found from Invisible Children to help more local and immediate organizations. So uh, in my own life, I had a daughter not too long into my journey here at being the activities director who was born uh, with a cleft palate. And she spent the first month of her life, this is a picture of her in the NICU. And when I was at the hospital spending so much time in the hospital, I ran into a, represent, uh, a representative from Make-A-Wish of Colorado and just kind of started talking to her about what do they do and how could maybe we could get involved with what they do to help kids um, that are very ill in our community. Um, so 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, we worked with Make-A-Wish for the very first time. And I know that it's spread across Colorado, and uh, but we were really one of the first groups to kind of really dive into it kind of head first and, and really uh, do everything we could to kind of make uh, our philanthropy with Make-A-Wish something that was powerful and create some really meaningful moments um, for both the kid who we're trying to serve and our school community as a whole. Um, a book that I'll give Rashawn complete credit for that I, I'm teaching in class this year it's called The Power of Moments, and we're, we're working through that book right now in, in my class. But this book, I think, speaks exactly to why our philanthropy through Make-A-Wish uh, has worked at Smoky Hill, because what we've been able to do is create some really powerful moments for people. Uh, when I first started thinking about bringing Make-A-Wish in, we were trying to do a spirit week in the winter that was a total dud. We would try to do a homecoming part two, basically, where we would do a, a dance, which was very lightly attended. We would do some dress up days, which were not very well um, participated in. And, and we would do a pep assembly. And our pep assemblies at Smoky Hill are on Friday afternoons and the school days are shorter. So kids have the choice to go home or to stay at our pep assemblies and they stay now. I mean, the tradition is, is pretty incredible, I think, at Smoky Hill. So this is a picture, this seems like a different world now, but this was our last Wish Week pep assembly. And that's on a Friday afternoon when all of those kids could have gone home, but they are packed in our gym and celebrating and creating a moment for themselves for our community uh, and for the kids that we are sponsoring their wishes for. Uh, and this was not what the pep assembly looked like 11 years ago before we started make, working with Make-A-Wish, but we've created this tradition of giving back uh, at our school that I think has more spirit attached to it than a lot of the traditions that we have uh, with our homecoming at this point. I think most kids would say that they look more forward to a, our wish week than they do to, to homecoming, which is uh, homecoming still huge around here, but this is, I think, grown beyond that at this point. Um, it didn't used to look like that. Uh, and I just wanna kind of walk through what, what it, it looks like around here. So we started in 2011 um, and we started kind of small. We didn't really know what we were doing, but we, we worked with Make-A-Wish to get our, our first wish kid. 
And every since then, I would say that we've created moment after moment after moment, uh, both within our school community and with these kids. Um, so here's just some stories that I hope you see that you could potentially create at your own schools um, and have them be as powerful as ours have been. So our first wish kid was in 2011. Her name was Cheyenne. She was eight years old at the time. And this is a picture of her right here, throwing her arms in the air. That's at our pep assembly. We didn't know what we were doing. We tried our best to, to raise some money. And that first year, I, I didn't think we'd ever raise that much money again. We raised about uh, $16,000 and we told her that she was going to get to go to Disney World. Um, and that's her throwing her hands up in the air, which was an incredible moment, unbelievable for everybody in the room and for her and her family. Um, the next picture that I shared here was Connor and Connor wanted to go to Disney World. And part of the power of this moment is Connor's parents emailed me back after they got to go to Disney World just thanking me for sending him and what a treat it was and talked about how they met all these different characters at Disney World. They got to meet these princesses and Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. But the character that Connor continues to talk about were the buffaloes at the pep assembly that he got to walk in with. Um, and you can see that moment happening for Connor right there. And I think that year, which was a couple years later, we were close to raising, I think, $25,000 at that point. So it continued to kind of grow. And what I'd also say about Smoky Hill is we are a school of 42% free and reduced lunch. So to carry that kind of money with about 2,000 kids is mind blowing to me every year that we do it. But at this point, it's a tradition and, and kids really look forward to it and, and buy into it. Um, the next picture that I'd share right here is Laurel. And I'm, I'm gonna show you another picture of Laurel in a few minutes, but I remember Laurel uh, having very, very short hair because she was battling leukemia and, and her hair was very, very short in 2015. And she was incredibly, incredibly nervous to be a part of this pep assembly that we were gonna do. But we knew that she loved Sleeping Beauty. So we went and we found this girl that would dress up. That's not the real Sleeping Beauty, but here she is. She walked in uh, to our staging area and Laurel runs over to her, holds her hand. They walk into the auditorium or the gym, this packed gym together. And again, a moment that I don't think anybody in that gym will ever forget uh, or her or her family will ever forget. Um, this is Eli, 2016. And what's been cool about our Wish Weeks also, I feel is like depending on the kid's wish, it's allowed certain parts of our community to really help in the celebration. So Eli wanted to go to Hawaii and we have a pretty good sized Samoan population at Smoky Hill. And they knew he wanted to go to Hawaii. So at our pep assembly, we had this big Samoan dance that these kids put on. Um, and they gave him these candy uh, lays that he's wearing in that picture. Uh, and again, oftentimes I hear back from these kids' families just thanking us for what we've done. And Eli's family actually wrote us a book that is on display at our school. And in the book, it says that uh, we went to some luau's, um, but none of them were what that pep assembly was like for our son. So thank, thank you for doing that for our son. Again, just creating some pretty amazing moments. This is Andalyn. This is the first time this girl was ever in a school in that picture right there. She'd had two flight for life visits from her house to a hospital. Uh, and you can just see, I think, the joy in her face in that picture. Um, that year, I think we were the first year that we ever raised over $30,000, um, which is mind blowing again to me, but you can just see the absolute joy in that moment in that girl's face. In 2017, we worked with the Broncos and Eric was our wish kid. He was battling brain cancer. He wanted to meet Vaughn Miller. So Vaughn was awesome and had him over to uh, the training camp. But what, one thing that was really interesting, I think was with that year, we raised more money selling t-shirts than ever before because we had this connection kind of to the Broncos and with, uh, with Make-A-Wish together. 
Um, and we were able to kind of combine those two forces, which was, which was really pretty cool that year. Um, this slide I just want to share with you because I think these two stories right here are maybe the most powerful pieces about the power of philanthropy and giving back and what it can mean to these kids uh, who have this experience. This is Isaac and he, he was five years old in that picture. And his goal was to, he wanted to go to Disney World and he's battling leukemia. Uh, we had this pep assembly, we raised a lot of money. We were able to help make a wish, send him to, to Disney World. But Isaac didn't get to go to Disney World till 2018. Five years after the fact that we'd raised all this money, and his parents sent me some pictures thanking, thanking us in 2018, so five years later, and just told the, this story about how the fact that this experience and this moment had happened for him, that there was always that carrot in front of him. And he knew that if he was to battle through all this chemotherapy, eventually he was gonna get to Disney World and how thankful they were that that was there for him and that they had no doubt that knowing he was going to get to Disney World really helped him push through some really, really tough times. Cool story, I think, that how many, how awesome would it be if, if that's a story other schools could tell? I think it would be incredible, right? Um, this picture here of this young man, Ken Dietrich, was our wish kid in 2018. And I can see in that picture just the joy in that kid's face, and I can see it in the kids behind him. But one thing his mom talked to me a lot about is he had a, a kidney transplant. He's a little shorter than other kids in his grade, and he was bullied pretty badly in middle school, is what his mom would talk to me about. And talked to me about how powerful that moment was where he was like a celebrity at our school uh, and how meaningful that was for him. And uh, he's actually planned to go to Smoky Hill this year. He wasn't supposed to go to Smoky Hill, but because of his illness, he's actually going to an online school. But I hope once this COVID thing goes away, here's a kid who he showed such love for, wants to actually go to school here at Smoky Hill, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, moving on, this is Jira Elias. He was one of uh, nine brothers and sisters, the kid with the greatest mullet I've ever seen in my entire life. is all party in the front. Uh, in the back, rather, all business in the front. And I think he had nine brothers and sisters. He was a family of 10 kids. Um, and it was his moment. I don't know that he had many moments in his life and, and just to see him have that moment. And this is a spirit stick we use at our pep assembly. And for him to just hug that thing, I think that picture is so powerful about what you can do to help others in your school. But the last one I would show you is last year, uh, our wish kid's right in the middle right here, and his name is Torian. And Torian's wish originally was to meet Steph Curry, and we knew that he loved basketball, loved it. Um, and unfortunately, Steph Curry broke his wrist the second game of the year in the NBA season last year and didn't play until, I think, uh, early, uh, and maybe early March, end of February. So he we had to, he had picked a different wish and I, I kind of felt like his mom might have kind of picked the wish for him, but we knew how much he loved basketball. So what we were able to do is not just have a pep assembly for him, but our basketball team at Smoky Hill was very good last year. And we had a Friday night game against Eagle Crest. And at the time we were ranked number two, Eagle Crest was number three. It was actually sold out, sold out gym, and we made him our um, our guest uh, player on the bench. So he's on the bench here. And I think if I can, I don't know if I can get this to play, but you can see um, him be announced as part of the starting lineup and the moment that that creates for this kid. He plays it off really cool too. Real cool. But our place went nuts. The Eagle Crest kids went nuts. And then he sat on the – I hope this isn't a violation, Justin, but we no, had him sit on the bench. Yeah. And look at him playing it off like he's Steph Curry over there. He's got, <laughs> he's got the, uh, the towel on his head. The game went into overtime. We won in overtime. He's a, this is an overtime shot right here. He's in the middle 
of the huddle having this moment that I, I guarantee you there's no way Greece probably touches that if he got to go to Greece, just this moment that he had at this basketball game. Uh, and then from a school perspective, one thing I thought was, was super cool is how our basketball team embraced this kid. And he actually ended up going to some other games. This is our, our basketball team after the pep assembly. They all hung around. And I'll tell you that our basketball team in general is not necessarily the most school spirit. They're very tight knit group of kids. They would oftentimes might not go to our pep assemblies even. Um, these kids really embrace this kid. And you can see he dyed his hair green and stuff, uh, Torian in that picture, but it was awesome to see that connection being made through this tradition of philanthropy that we did. And last year we raised about $35,000, which is awesome. I think at this point we were over about $300,000 over the course of the last 10 years. And I know that that's changed our school. I know that it's changed our students. And I know it's changed the lives of a lot of kids. And the reason partly I think that it works is there is that personal connection. You have this kid that you really feel like by giving money and by giving your time or by putting on an event that you are really making a difference in that kid's life. And we know that we're helping more than just the one kid. We're raising enough money to help multiple kids. So some ways that we've done that to raise that money is we've done a bunch of different things. Now this year's probably gonna need to look different, but last year we actually had the Wish Kid Torian play in a dodgeball tournament. We had a, a dodgeball tournament. You can see that was, he, they're all wearing Steph Curry jerseys that they, they handmade. Mm -hmm. um, and he was on that, that dodgeball team with some seniors at Smoky Hill which was awesome to have him play. That's the first time we've ever had a, a, our Wish Kid play. We've done a Mr. Miss, and we call it Professor Smoky Hill pageant, which has raised a good amount of money in the past. And, and we've had our Wish Kid come be the judge of that event in the past, which has been really cool to kind of make that connection with our Wish Kid. This was our pep assembly last year. And the reason why I brought this up is because it was our 10th year. So we worked with Make-A-Wish to try to bring back some of our former Wish Kids. And what you can see in this picture is that right there that I'm circling is Cheyenne. That was our first Wish Kid. So when she first came in our building, she was eight. In this picture right here, she's 18 and is a senior at Cherokee Trail High School, which is just down the road from us and how cool that was. And then the one that probably made me the most emotional is this picture right here. You can see this long hair. That was Laurel the one who was going through um, chemotherapy and had this really short hair and she came back for our pep assembly last year with this long hair, which to me was super emotional, just a good reminder of why we do this to, to help all these kids to, to battle through. And, and it was super cool to have that happen. Now this year, I'm not sure that we're gonna have an assembly like this, but this is what we've done in the past. So if I think at Smoky Hill, what we've been good at is not one really big event, but finding multiple small ones that we can do. And when you do multiple things well, it adds up to a, a big substantial amount of money. I think the other thing is there's other schools that do this incredibly well too. I, I know that, um, but we all kind of do it differently. I know that some places um, really depend on parent donors and things like that. And, and we've really tried to just keep it in house and have our kids experience these moments. So uh, one thing we did today actually was a, a Halloween dress up. I can, I'll touch base on that just a second. We do class competition coin drives, uh, becomes pretty competitive. We've worked with Jimmy John's to give us kind of free coupons for whatever grade uh, gets the most coins donated. We've done multiple restaurant nights, primarily within our community. We've done a miracle minute, which is where we pass around a bag in each classroom. It takes one minute to do a fundraiser. I think last year in just one minute during our wish week, we raised uh, close to like $2,500 just in one minute, just passing a bag around a, a classroom in each classroom. We've done t-shirt sales. We make them really unique to what our wish kids wish is. Uh, last year, we had those bright pink shirts that you could see and that we, we tried to because he wanted to go to Greece, we had some Greek writing on it, and uh, we sold out, I think, of a thousand t-shirts. Uh, we've worked with our feeder schools, which has been great. Our elementary schools, our middle schools have helped get involved. 
Uh, we've done a trivia bowl in the past. We played dodgeball. Uh, another piece that's been great about all this is, uh, is other organizations outside of just our leadership organization has jumped in and helped as well. Uh, DECA does this really cool marketplace that they've done as part of their class, which helps fundraise for us. Uh, I already touched base on Mr. and Ms. Smokey Hill, but in our PEP assembly, we've done something called a lip dub, which is probably a whole other segment if we want to dive into that stuff. But, and then the last one is we've, we've donated all the money from a winter dance to this. Um, and all that adds up to a pretty substantial amount of money, which I hope creates a good amount of change for kids that are in need. Um, and, and to me, that's been, been really positive. So today we did uh, a Halloween fundraiser, which was super simple. We just had buttons at our entrance. Kids could donate $2 to get a button, and then they could wear a costume to school today. We're, ha we're operating uh, on cohorts, only half our school was in session today. And um, so that's about 850 kids and we raised $384 today just by passing out buttons. Really simple, but a lot of that is just tradition. This is what we do, kids look forward to it. They know that they get to dress up for Halloween because it's a fundraiser. Um, and that's where we're at with this. We've put enough time and effort into it that it's a tradition at this point in time and kids wanna help, but hopefully we're doing it in some fun ways as well. When we think about our wish week, I've, I've tried to in our student leadership group to put them into committees. Uh, this is what they've looked like in the past. One is uh, our Make-A-Wish committee, which primary role is to work with the organization itself and then work on fundraising. So those, that group would do things like restaurant nights, um, would do things like the t-shirt design, working out, reaching out to feeder schools. We've done a school-wide lip sync for years, which again, I think if anybody wants to jump in on that, I'd, I'd be happy to come back and talk about that, but we've always connected it to our wish week. Uh, we have a committee that works on the pep assembly and coordinates with the family of the kid to make sure they're comfortable. And our job, our role always has been to make sure that kid is invested and engaged in the pep assembly. We don't want them to be a prop. We want them to be a kid who's really engaged as much as they can and participating in what we're doing in those pep assemblies. Um, we've done a, a, a Mr. Miss and Professor Smokey Hill contest and we've done a dodgeball tournament for Wish Week uh, and that committee's usually worked on the dress days for the week, which we've always done specifically around the wish of the kid. Um, and then we've always had a dance committee. So that's what it's like this year. We're going to, we're going to need to shift that up. We're kind of in the process of starting that right now. Um, probably look a little bit different, but I'm excited to see what these kids kind of are able to come up with. Um, I'm going to end with, with this because I think that this is really the, the goal and, and to see it coming true for me is, is really awesome we're not just helping the kid from Make-A-Wish or to Make-A-Wish organization. I, I feel like we're making a huge impact on our own students. And some of the ways that I can see that just within our own council is we have a student that started their own nonprofit. Um, I'm, I know that they were motivated by what they saw us be able to do and give back and how kids reacted through Make-A-Wish that they actually began their own nonprofit organization. Uh, I think Ellie's on here. Uh, she started her own podcast, I think, as, as a, and, and the focus, I think, Ellie, who's in this, this call, has been to kind of shed a light on, on uh, philanthropy and, and helping. I know when I was talking to her, it was about how can we help kids uh, who are trying to do remote learning but don't have access to broadband. Um, we had a group of kids make a YouTube video last year to raise money and for healthcare workers, and this was like March, April that had a ton of views on YouTube, uh, which was awesome. And then we actually have two kids that are, have been in my class or in our council that now are full-time employees at Make-A-Wish of Colorado, which I think is super cool also. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is, is I see the value of this being far more than how much money can we raise as a resume builder for some kids, but really, it's making a deep impact on their life. Um, 
and I, I'm proud of how that's kind of evolved. So that's kind of my spiel there. I'd love to take some questions or, um, I don't know, Rashawn or anybody, I'll, I'll pull, turn on the chat. If anybody has any questions that I could address or, or students, I don't know if you guys. Yeah, Scott, how, how do you identify um, the kids that you ultimately grant the wishes to? Do you guys work directly with Make-A-Wish or? I do, yeah. Yeah, so I have I just have a contact that I work with over there. And usually, I, they usually just are looking at when do the wishes need to be granted and what are the wishes. Um, and so I've worked with them directly. Uh, I'll tell you this year, I, first of all, the money that we raise does not, it goes to make a wish as a whole. It doesn't go directly to that kid's wish, but the memory and the moment that we're providing for that kid, I think is as powerful as anything else. So um, if we don't, if a kid's wish is to go to Disneyland and we only, it, and his, their wish costs $9,000 and we only raise $5,000, we don't have to have a pep assembly and say, hey, we you know, make enough money and, and then they have to feel bad about it. Our, we always try to phrase it that we're raising money for Make-A-Wish of Colorado in honor of. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I do work directly with them. So although I think sometimes kids think that, that, that we have to come up with a certain amount of money because of the wish. But this year, um, I actually worked with them over our fall break, which was two weeks ago. And, and the kid we're going to work with uh, is four years old. And she uh, wants her re her room remodeled so <laughs> she loves purple and unicorns and rainbows so we're gonna work on on making that happen for her in this kind of weird year does that help yeah absolutely any you know you mentioned this is going to be a unique year with with covid and, and probably not being able to do a lot of the in-person fundraising that you guys are used to have you thought of some creative ways already this year that you'll be able to you know raise that kind of money you thought twenty five thirty thousand dollars in one year yeah, and I think we know that that the amount we've raised in the past will be really hard and and the other thing I'd say is I as an advisor I've never I hope that you guys would agree with this I don't think I've ever put pressure on a dollar amount that we have to raise this much um, but I guess to answer your question yes yeah, so we've talked about doing a virtual pep assembly we've we've talked we're, we met today about restaurant nights because I still think we can do that and just have it to pick up the orders to pick up instead of sitting in the restaurant. Um, we've talked about doing our Mr. Miss Smoky Hill as like a Zoom call kind of contest as, a po as opposed to sitting in the auditorium. Um, we've got some awesome creative kids that I'm sure will step up and, and kind of find some ways to still make some things happen because I know that they're they're motivated to do that. Sean, you got some questions for me? <laughs> I was waiting for Justin to say, okay, I got it. I'm good. He would say anything. <laughs> I, I'm sure uh, Rashawn's probably got some some design advice for that room. <laughs> Everybody's got jokes. All right. <laughs> I'm new. I'm new. So, Scott, hey, my question. Ahead. Okay, go ahead. So, um, you know, you, you talk about um, – creating those moments and man it it's absolutely there for every wish kid that you've had yeah how do you how do you make sure that the students who put all of this together understand that this is also a moment for them as well um i think it's maybe that's a good question for one of them but what i would say is one thing we've done and and i probably should have thrown this in that any year we've done this we've always tried to meet with the kid just as a student council first. So we've brought them in and had lunch with them just as, just as a student council. Um, and that's, I think, created this one-on-one -on -one connection with that kid before they're in front of this massive assembly. They've got to know the kid. And I'll tell you, doing that motivates those kids so much, I think, because they make that connection and we sing a silly song and we eat some pizza or whatever it might be, just something really simple and I really feel like that makes them motivated to help this kid. They want to raise money to see this kid be happy. Um, 
And so I, I think that naturally happens with that meeting for one thing. Um, Devin, do you want to add in there? I see your face yeah. want to add in there. Yeah. I just wanted to elaborate a little bit. Um, I agree with you with the um, having them with the lunch and bringing them into the student government period. I feel like that gives us the time to connect with them and like make them feel comfortable with us. Um, because of course, if they're going to be at one of our pep assemblies, it's going to be on a larger scale and there's going to be more students. Um, so I feel like that's the majority part of what we do. And then also just finding their common interests when they tell us and really trying to elaborate and make it on the bigger scale of it. And just overall making them feel comfortable, have a good time and just make sure that they know we're here to help them and want them to be with us and at Smoky Hill and a part of the Smoky Hill community. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, in that vein, I feel like another reason why like things like our prep assembly and like the whole Make-A-Wish week are kind of a moment for us is like kind of the process of actually getting to that point. Like it's not only the assembly that makes it important, but also like the investment that we've done beforehand. I was actually reading this article earlier and it was like, oh, you can have like, you can eat a sandwich or like a hamburger or whatever, and it'll taste really good. Like the process that you have to make it, like that's what makes it worth it in the end. I'm not sure if that analogy makes sense, but like, <laughs> at least for me and like I know some of my friends like the actual investment in um, whatever event whatever fundraising thing is the perfect analogy would just be like hard work pays off you know like you put the work in to present it and to make it and then um, at the end you are happy with your um, outcome and I feel like um, Scott you gave us a good a good quote and it was something it's not about the journey but the it's not the end, it's the, it's the yeah. journey. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Mr. Wooden gives you that one, yeah. yeah. Um, so my name is Sandra. I just wanted to add um, a little bit more on that. So when we meet with the, that our wish kid, I think we develop that like real connection, which ends up making us have real intentions in what we do um, and with our activities. So that's what really helps us. Um, understand the importance of what we're doing and like brings us back to oh why are we doing this yeah thanks so can i ask one more thing scott yeah Wait, shout out to kiara she's here all right kid <laughs> um you know as, as like you, you you make sure that the kids are not thinking about what other schools are doing we know that there are schools right. in the state and around the country that do yeah a lot more in terms of of that um but as you bring in that that new that new crew of kids you know you talked about you know getting them kind of yeah. hooked if you're talking about bringing another school on board what are those first three things that an advisor should think about when when they're thinking about implementing something like this and hoping to get to where you are yeah well i would say one one thing is number one i guess one point i was trying to get across at the beginning is the more personal you can make it, the more successful I think you're gonna find. And it doesn't have to be make-a-wish, it can be all kinds of other things. What I've just found is if, you, if, if kids can feel as if they're helping another human being and they can put a face to who they're helping, what I found is it's much more successful. So if you can find that type of situation, I think you're gonna be more successful in your fundraising. Um, that, that's what I found. And then two, is we've grown into this. We didn't start out making 30 some thousand dollars. We started with 16 and we thought it was the greatest thing ever. I still think that was incredible for us and, and the school that we are and, and to do that. Um, but what it turns into, it's like anything, you're gonna get better every year that you do it, but it's the commitment to staying with it. I think some schools struggle by just jumping around from one thing to another instead of really trying to be consistent and do something really well. Do something really well. Um, it takes time and commitment and learning from one year to the next about what you could do better. We always, as a council, one thing we do after any one of these weeks is always do something we call keep, add, delete. What should we keep? What should we add? What should we delete? And then we start planning the next year looking at what we did last year. So that new group of kids see the keep, add, delete from last year. So that we're not starting from scratch 
every single year. We're, we're building upon what we were successful with the year before. Does that help? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Anything uh, else? Yes, I got a question. Maybe you or even some of your students might uh, be able to answer it. But you mentioned uh, there was an example of, like the basketball team um, getting involved with with one of the uh, make a make a wish um, yeah. kids. How do you get other teams or or clubs or just you know the student body as a whole um, involved and on board with what you guys are doing and and not just the the student council? I can uh, answer that kind yeah, of. Go ahead. Go. Um, well, I'm a freshman, so I I don't have a ton of like experience with this, but um, I went to Laredo, which is on the same campus as Smokey, and I like they court Smokey coordinates with Laredo. So even before I came to Smokey, I was aware of how Wish Week worked and how really important it is to you know the school and the community. So. And, you know, going into this year, you know, everyone is already super excited because, you know, we already have experience with it, even though we're kind of new to the school and we already are expecting it. So I think the fact that, you know, Smokey's reaching out to schools um, other than themselves, I think that's pretty important because people can expect it and look forward to it. So working with our middle school. Thank you. Um, some other ways, Justin, that we've done that is we have a trivia bowl where we really encourage teams to make teams. So I know my swim team always has a trivia bowl team that comes and plays. Um, so that that's another way we do. Uh, um, in, we've, we've connected some things of our fundraising even into homecoming, not necessarily this year, but in the past. Uh, we've done a carnival where we ask different clubs and, and teams to have a booth. And then the money that we raise from that carnival, we donate to Make-A-Wish. Uh, so those are a couple of different ways which we encourage uh, organizations to kind of get together to support. Um, we've done things at, at swim meets and basketball games and wrestling uh, matches. And, and I use just those sports because it's during the winter season that we do this. Uh, or we've just had donation jars on your way into the competition where people can just drop off and donate on their way into the game. Um, things like that, where we've just kind of, maybe we just make a couple dollars here or there, but in, in the end, it kind of all adds up to pretty um, big. Just another thing real quick. Uh, we also try to incorporate teams or organizations to participate in like our homecoming parade for them to get on the trailer and just participate in that. Um, also with like Lip Dub, we have our different sections and um, usually a majority of the sports, almost all of them are participating in that. And then lastly, um, Smoky Hill or DECA Marketplace, or yeah. I think it's the, yeah, Marketplace. Marketplace. Um, we try to encourage just all of the organizations and clubs to build a little drop off or a, um, a booth to um, participate in the marketplace. Yep. I think one other way like that we get not only clubs, but also like individuals in those clubs, if that makes sense involved, is with things like, um, for example, with our Mr. and Miss and then Professor Hill. So like you have kids who are from like very diverse um, like backgrounds, I guess, from our school. Like we have theater kids who are um, competing in that. We have people in athletic programs, academic programs. So really just, I guess, seeing um, people that you're close with and who are part of your community up on stage, um, people want to be there to support them. That's another way that we get um, people there. Yeah. I just thought last year in particular, just it was just super unique. The way our basketball team bonded with this kid was so cool. And I, I know it was endlessly meaningful for him and, and his mom and, and to be able to do that. So that was just a, a pretty cool thing to see happen. And I think it happened naturally. I don't think anybody forced those basketball kids to do that. Um, it was super cool. Yeah, that was an awesome example. Yeah. Anything else, anything you guys, uh, any of my students, anything you guys want to add, anything else about our tradition or anything that you would want to add? Cool. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Scott. And thanks for all the great feedback as well from your students. Really, really appreciate that. Um, that was a really meaningful presentation. Um, Thanks. Thank you. 
And we've got our last week of our student and advisor uh, webinars next week. And we uh, look forward to hopefully having everyone, everyone back for our final week of presentations. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys next week. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Morning.